Good day, everyone, and welcome to today's BASF training webinar, Products That Can Eliminate the Top 5 Pest Insects. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. Here's a quick review of what you will see on your screen. To the left of your screen is the viewer, which is where you see the presentation. To the right is a control panel where you can ask questions. The control panel will collapse automatically when not in use. To keep it open, you can click the View menu and uncheck the Auto Hide control panel. You have joined this webinar in listen-only mode, which means you are muted. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation and we will address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. Also via the control panel, you will be able to download resource documents that our presenter has provided by going to the handouts pane anytime during the webinar. With that, I'll turn it over to Viserys Digital Marketing Manager, Jeff Luckiger, to get us started. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, today's presenter is Desiree Straubinger. She has spent over 20 years studying and teaching about the insect world. As technical service representative for BASF, Desiree leads efforts to build and share technical knowledge throughout the industry. She makes certain that those she works with gain the right expertise to get the job done. Desiree graduated from Purdue University with a degree in entomology and is a board certified entomologist as well as a certified professional food safety. Her true passion for the pest industry was revealed when she began her career as a pest prevention specialist in Orlando, Florida. The following 20 years were spent in various positions with pest control companies, including market technical director for rent to kill and vice president technical for Certus Pest Incorporated. Desiree's passion for the profession has led her to become an industry leader, working to elevate the industry and increase interest in the field of entomology. She serves in key positions on numerous boards and committees, including the incoming president of Pi Chi Omega, PMP Magazine Editorial Advisory Board, and ESA Southeastern Branch Nominations Committee. That is quite the resume. And with that, I will turn it over to Desiree. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started. That was a great intro. Um, you can see here on my title slide, there is a QR code that will take you um, directly to my contact information in your phone. You can just click save and it'll be done. Um, that is just an option for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So today I'm gonna talk about Alpine WSG and beyond. So I'll be talking about really our whole suite of products um, in that are Alpine products. So we will start with Alpine WSG. So uh, Alpine WSG is really the star of the show today and you'll kind of see why um, the application uh, for this product is fantastic. Um, so it does have this unique horizontal transfer um, between insects, um, especially insects that live in colonies. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that um, coming up here in a little bit. So it does provide excellent control and long-lasting protection. Um, it has a non-repellent active ingredient, um, which is really important for some insects. Um, so we'll talk about that. Specifically ants, they interact easily with it, um, which sometimes is hard to find in a liquid product, right? Um, there's no application restrictions during rainfall, which is also kind of unheard of in the pest control industry. Um, so. Not that anybody wants to be out there treating during the rain, but you certainly could with this product. Um, it has excellent efficacy. So I've got a little bit of data in this presentation, um, but just know um, you can always reach out to myself or to anybody from BASF and they can get you the efficacy data for whatever pest you're looking for that for. We have lots of data slides, um, so I'm not gonna bore you with data really today very much. So. Um, there are great label directions for outdoor applications, including no language for treating um, distances around bodies of water. So you can treat, you can't treat water directly, 
uh, but you can treat very close to water, um, including things like gutters and drainage areas are allowed, right? So that's that's kind of makes it a, a, a different type of product and it's kind of unheard of in the industry as well. Lots of application sites. So if you live in a site state, this product has a lot of application um, sites listed um, on, the, on the label. There's no visible residue or settling out of products. So if you see that picture that's just to the right of my bullet points, um, you can see that that's Alpine WSG. It's mixed with water and it's been sitting there for a month, just like that. No agitation, nothing. You can see it's totally clear. So that's how it is when you put it, when you dispense it out of a sprayer. Um, so no visible residue and no settling. So it also has a reduced risk status um, for this active ingredient for, for the, from the EPA. Um, so you can, you'll be able to see a little bit more about that on an upcoming slide as well. And it has a food handling label. So I know a lot of people that are probably on the call um, have used this product actually for food handling areas, uh, whether it's commercial kitchens or, or areas like that um, for German cockroaches. So this has a, it just has a great, very broad open label. It also has really good efficacy on key pests. So we're going to talk about the big five here um, quite a bit, but we'll start with ants. Um, so ants, you know, treating trails of ants is important and a lot of products, um, you know, kind of give you some restriction on where you can apply it and things like that. But Alpine WSG can be um, around your perimeter, but also on sidewalks, in the yard, on trails, et cetera. We talked about that horizontal transfer. We'll talk about that a little bit more coming up. Um, cockroaches, so this is not going to scatter your populations. It's a non-repellent, right? So, and you can also use bait at the same time. So we'll talk about that as well um, when we get into the other products and, and how you can use them together. For flies, um, you know, filth flies especially, you can use this inside garbage cans and dumpsters, on the outsides of dumpsters, and really it kind of takes those objects and it makes them into giant bait stations. Who doesn't want a giant bait station for their flies, right? So you can kind of exploit the fact that the flies are already coming to that place and landing, and then you can be treating them, and it's not going to keep them from landing there because it's not repellent. So being a non-repellent allows them to just to keep coming to the same spot and landing and then dying later on. Um, so, and it does kill imidacloprid resistant flies, which has become a really big problem uh, recently where we've got a lot of flies out there that are resistant to imidacloprid products. And then for bed bugs, it's a great combo product. Um, we'll kind of talk about the aerosols and dust. Uh, there's a broadcast treatment on the label for bed bugs. Um, so this is just a really good product all around for bed bugs and also for fleas. Um, so there's not a lot of liquid products that you can do broadcast. Um, so you can apply this to rugs and floors and carpets, upholstered furnitures and pet beds and their resting places, like all those places that the fleas and the flea larvae hang out. Um, and it gives you a really long residual. In addition to those top five, which are the big ones that we, you know, we run into on a daily basis, it also has a lot of other pests on the label. And I'm not going to go through this list, but you can see a lot of pests that you run into frequently are on here, right? Things like yellow jackets, spiders, um, ticks, you know, things like that. And then in, into your kind of occasional invaders, maybe your millipedes and centipedes and and earwigs, right? So things that you run into a lot. Also for fall invading or overwintering insects, you don't have the restriction of your spot and localized treatments or under eaves, things like that. You don't have any of that uh, restrictions. You can literally treat the whole side of a house. So I grew up in Indiana where we have lots of these like box elder bugs and Asian lady beetles. Um, and so, man, wouldn't have been awesome to be able to treat the whole side of the house and just get rid of them before they found their way inside right, to overwinter. So I talked about that it is a reduced risk pesticide. So this, this uh, active ing ingredient, which is denitefiron, uh, has been granted this reduced risk status. Um, so it's excellent for interior uses, indoor applications, maybe sensitive accounts, places that have children and pets. Um, but really it's good for just about anything, right? So um, residential, you know, a lot of people want that reduced risk status in their, in their homes or around their homes. Um, 
maybe you're treating some sensitive accounts, maybe it's schools or hospitals um, or healthcare, uh, like nursing homes, um, or even things like zoos and dog kennels, right? So just has a really great label for all of that. We talked about transfer a little bit. So I'm just gonna kind of give you an example of how we show the transfer. This is a study that we had done. Um, so this is with carpenter ants. So they treated some workers, they were called donor workers, right? So they treated the workers with Alpine WSG and then took those while they were still living and put them into colonies of untreated carpenter ants, right? So um, there's two different studies, there's two different graphs that you'll see on the next um, slide that show they put either one live carpenter ant or five live carpenter ants in with 50 workers. And so you can see the one in 50 is that darker green. So that was only one carpenter ant put in with 50 others. And then the lighter green is the five carpenter ants put in with 50 workers, right? So um, you can see both of them within two days had excellent control, right? And with three days, both of them were 100% control. So you can really see that that transfer happened, right? So it, it, that carpenter ant took that WSG, it went into the colony and it really, you know, it, it came in contact with all of the carpenter ants around it um, versus if you use other liquid residuals that aren't don't have that transfer, then they would just die, right? The one or the five would just die and they wouldn't transfer it to the other carpenter ants and get rid of the colony, which is really what you want when you're dealing with ants, right? You want the whole colony to disappear. So products with this transfer, they have to be a non-repellent, right? It's not gonna do any good if you're repelling an, an insect away from it. They can't pick it up and take it back to their colony. It also has to be slow acting. We don't wanna kill those ants or um, other insects that are out interacting with the active ingredient. We don't wanna kill them before they get back to the rest of, of the insects that you wanna get rid of. It has to also be extremely effective at low doses. And they can't exhibit any initial behavioral change because that behavioral change could limit that transfer um, among social insects, right? The social insects pick up that, that behavior change. They're like, oh, I don't wanna hang out with him, right? He's, he's something's weird. So you wanna make sure that you know, it doesn't exhibit any kind of behavioral change. So we have two products that have this horizontal transfer. So Termidor, which we won't be talking about a ton today, um, but is very well known in the industry for its control of insects, um, and then al also Alpine. So I've kind of talked about this as I went through, but this is a great re representation of how transfer effect takes place. This actually comes straight from our Absolute Ant Control Solutions Guide, which I believe is in the handouts. If not, it's at the website. Yep, this one's in the handout. So, um, this is part of the handouts. So you can download this PDF. Uh, so, but basically it shows, you know, that forager ants venture out of the colony. Only a small part of ants will leave the colony, right? Most of them stay within the confines of that colony, wherever it is. If it's in the soil or in a tree, um, they stay there. But, you know, the, there are forager ants that go out, right? They go out to find food or, you know, whatever the colony needs, right? So those ants, unknowingly, they're going through that non-repellent area, treated area, and they're kind of picking up that insecticide, right? So they're, they're picking it up, and then they're gonna take it back, and they are going to interact with those ants that never leave the colony. So those exposed ants then transfer it to the other ants through all of their social behaviors. So we're not gonna get into a biology, ant biology lesson here today, or social insect biology lesson, but there's lots of different ways that they're interacting together, right? So if you take that and you compare it, maybe, there we go. You compare it to repellent insecticides. Those forager ants go out of the colony, they come in contact, they detect that repellent insecticide, which is very easy for them to do, and they avoid that area, right? So you may, you will probably kill a few of them, the ones that happen to interact with that, but you're gonna kill those off, right? So no, nobody's coming back to the colony with any product. Um, so then what happens is the ant population maybe lowers a little bit and then it rebounds. So you actually get more ants, right? So they come back, they reinvade the home um, or whatever property is being invaded. <clears throat> we'll talk about cockroaches in a little while with some cockroach bait and things, but 
Repellency is really important when you're talking about cockroaches as well, especially German cockroaches. So they're not social insects, but they do interact a lot with each other, right? They live in very tight spaces. Um, so you want that insecticide that you're using to be non-repellent because what happens is if it's repellent, they just stay where they are, right? They don't interact. They don't come out of their little hidey holes and things like that. And so they're not going to interact with the insecticide. You also want them to interact with the bait that you're using, whether it's a gel bait or a, or a dry flowable bait. Um, they're not going to do that either, right? Because they're not going to come out. So um, you can see here those dots represent gel bait in the center. So with a repellent insecticide, they're just going to stay away from it. You can't really use those two products together versus a non-repellent insecticide with gel bait. You can use them together and they'll actually go to the gel that's close to the, the, the liquid residual that you've put down and also right inside it. So you can gel bait or you can bait right inside the same area. So to talk a little bit, we'll compare Alpine WSG to uh, pyrethroids. So this information is based off of the Sidekick CS label, which is our product, um, but very common limitations and things and applications for pyrethroids in general. Um, so you have a lot of limitations on your application site, right? So you, you can't treat just wherever you want or wherever is needed. Um, structural surface treatments are extremely limited. Impervious surfaces is also limited. Um, you don't have an interior broadcast spray for carpets. Um, the off-structure yard treatments are very limited as well. And they, you can't apply to any area where drainage can go into an aquatic habitat, right? Versus Alpine WSG. So there's a long list of things here for sure, but you can use it in attics and eaves and exterior wall surfaces where insects congregate. You can also apply it to yards and then um, in these impervious surfaces um, out in the yard. You can treat sidewalks and driveways and patios and porches, right? So you don't have to worry about that. And also gutters and drainage areas, which we talked about. Um, really, you can just, the only limitation is you can't put it right in, onto water or, or in water. Um, you can apply it to rugs and carpets and furniture. We talked about that. Um, really great for fleas. Um, and then also um, insect trails. And then we talked about there's no application restrictions during rainfall. And also some states don't allow you to treat unless you see an insect or a pest. But this has on the label preventative applications. So there's preventative applications on the label for ants, um, Asian lady beetle, brown marmorated stink bug, kudzu bug, centipedes, paper wasp, yellow jackets, and mosquitoes. So all of those have preventative um, parts on the label. So that's kind of the star of the show for Alpine WSG. Um, so I'm going to start kind of going through the rest of our Alpine products. And then we'll talk about how you can throw it all together, right? All the information that I've, I've come at you with here today. So the first we're gonna talk about is the, our aerosols that are in the Alpine suite. So we've got Alpine pressurized insecticide and then also Alpine um, flea and bed bug, um, which is the pressurized insecticide. You have an Alpine pressurized fly bait, Alpine foam, cockroach gel bait rotation one and two, and then the Alpine WSG, which we just talked about, and Alpine Dust. So I'm going to kind of go through the pros of all of these different products. Um, so first we'll talk about the cockroach gel bait. So we have rotation one and rotation two, and they have the same active ingredient. So same, uh, you know, the, the exact same active, but the bait matrix is different, right? So it's two different palatable bait matrix that are appealing to gel bait averse and non-gel bait averse cockroaches. So that rotating those, which we recommend every six months to rotate your gel baits, right? So re uh, rotating those can work on preventing bait aversion, which is really important. And it's something that's really common with German cockroaches. And these both offer a really fast kill, an excellent secondary nymphal mortality. Um, so it you know, passes through to the nymphs, um, they feed on it as well. And then you can use this to combine with other products in the complete cockroach control guide, which is um, also a, an attachment, a handout to the presentation, um, or is available on our website. So, but we do have a study actually that when you combine the Alpine cockroach gel bait with Alpine WSG, you get faster control of those cockroach populations. 
So other products that you can use this with um, would be the Vert Dry Flowable or Phantom, um, the Alpine Pressurized Insecticide, uh, all different products from BASF, right? So if you go into that um, complete cockroach control brochure that's attached, it will list out um, all of that that I, that I just told you, right? And it'll work through it with you. So Alpine Dust um, is a Dynatethrone product as well, and it has a diatomaceous earth as its carrier. So you'll see those on the um, label. It's also non-repellent, so it's either by contact or ingestion, right? So cockroaches that, or whatever insect you're dealing with will get the dust on them, they clean themselves, right? So they'll ingest it. But also if they just contact it, it will kill them that way as well. Um, again, it's reduced risk status um, for public health for the use uh, for, uh, by the EPA. So it's a dust formulation. It provides long lasting broad spectrum control. Um, lots and lots of different insects as well as sites on the label for indoor and outdoor. It does include food handling areas. And if you're dusting things like wasp nests, um, maybe you have a dusting pole um, and you're dealing with things that are up high, or they're inside voids, it doesn't excite those insects. So a lot of um, dust products will get them kind of moving around more, which is what you don't want, right? When you're dealing with stinging insects up close. Um, so that, that this product does not excite them. It doesn't get them moving more. Um, it's also really ideal for bed bug prone voids, even in sensitive accounts, and it does kill pyrethroid resistant bed bugs. So great dust product. Then we have Alpine Flea and Bed Bug Pressurized Insecticide. Um, so this includes the Dynatecteron, uh, Peralithin, and Peripoxifen, um, which is an IGR, right? So you're adding an IGR into this product. It is labeled for fleas, bed bugs, and then Lone Star and Brown Dog ticks. So it's really flea, bed bug, and tick pressurized insecticide, right? Um, so it does kill fleas for up to 30 days and it kills hatching flea eggs up to seven months. So it's a really long residual on this product. Um, it aids in preventing bed bug hatch and it kills bed bugs post hatch. There's a low odor, which when you're using it in residential applications is really important, right? Uh, no mixing required, which is always great to be able to just to walk in with your you know, can of PC Alpine flea and bed bug and be able to treat. You don't have to do any calculations or mixing. Um, the small particles inside this aerosol, they really penetrate deep into that carpet pile, which is where those flea eggs are. Um, if you've ever had a severe flea infestation, you know, there's there's pupil cases, there's eggs, there's uh, larva, there's fleas, right? So you've got all of these different things and they're deep in that carpet pile. Doesn't stain most fabrics and carpets. Um, it also has a quick drying formulation so the area that you treat can be reoccupied very quickly. Um, so you don't have to have some, you know, multiple hours of, of air out before somebody can come back into an area. It also is labeled to treat mattress tufts and seams, um, the room perimeter, which is important for bed bugs and for fleas, um, inside and around furniture, uh, headboards, box springs, carpeted areas, wall coverings. You can even treat luggage with this. Um, so you know, if you need to get into kind of the nooks and crannies of luggage, um, it's labeled for that as well. Also out on our website, we have the Better Bed Bug Control um, document. So if you go to um, the Alpine Flea and Bed Bug part of our website, um, there's a lot of resources for, for this product specifically. Um, and this image came from that, right? So this is kind of a how to use a lot of different BASF products for bed bugs, right? So this is a typical room, you know, that whether it's a hotel or a residence um, when you're treating for bed bugs. And so you can see there's lots of different points and it lists out which product we recommend for using in those areas. Um, but you can see this is a combination of Phantom, um, Phantom or Phantom 2, which is the pressurized Phantom, uh, PT Alpine Flea and Bed Bug, the Alpine WSG, and then also Alpine Dust, right? So it's using the whole Alpine suite for bed bugs, and then also adding Phantom in there. Next, I want to talk about the pressurized insecticide. This is a really great um, formulation to have, right? It's it's a quick 
it's a quick use um, thing, no mixing, no mass, no calculating, very convenient, right? It does have the same broad label and has the commercial food handling areas on it um, as Alpine WSG. Um, broad spectrum, lots and lots of pests on the label for Alpine pressurized. And also it's a really good rotational partner, right? So you can put it into that non-repellent program and you don't have to worry about um, contaminating other products that you're using, right? Whether you're using baits um, or dust or whatever, you don't have to worry about that because it's non-repellent. And then the last product that I have on the list is Alpine Foam. Um, so Alpine Foam is a little bit different of a product, right? So it's not a liquid, um, it's not a dust, it's a dry foam. So it's a really good product for termites, but also for other insects, right? So it does give you quick control of kind of the isolated subterranean and dry wood termite infestations. It's, a, it's great for um, spot treatments, you know, to wait if you're waiting for a full house treatment um, for a customer. So it's highly effective on ants. Um, and, you know, if they're known, if those species are known for interior infestation, like Argentine and pharaoh and white-footed, um, and also forage and carpenter ants, right? So if you know, you know, that, that it's, that's the species you're dealing with and they're coming from a void area, you can easily foam it with this product without mixing. Uh, and casual invaders are also on the label. So you've got Asian lady beetles, box cutter bugs, um, cluster flies, and elm leaf beetles. Uh, so these are really great. It's a great use for that alpine foam um, to get into those void areas where they're harboring. Um, a lot of those are overwintering, right? So overwintering insects. So it could be a good solution if you live in a cold environment, um, could be a good solution for you even in the winter. So it is a dry foam solution. So it does allow kind of that quick delivery to voids. Um, it does, it's not heavily wet um, when it dissipates. So it's not gonna, you don't have to worry about what else is in the wall. Um, so, and then easy to use, right? So you've got the hose and then the tip on the end of it. And um, like I said, you can handle those termite infestations, especially swarmers. Um, and we're probably ending the swarm season now, but it'll come back, especially here in Florida. We got another one in the fall, right? So, um, you know, swarm season, uh, you can go into a customer's property and kind of pacify them until you can get that, that treatment scheduled, right, for your perimeter treatment. And then it's also, I told you, it's very easy um, and convenient, right? And actually, I lied. I've got one more here. So we've got PT Alpine uh, pressurized flybait. So this uh, fly bait is a great product, uh, has quick knockdown. Uh, it does also kill the metaclopard resistant house flies, right? Which I said was a big issue right now that we're running into. Um, lots of research is being done on that. So it does work in sunny conditions. So you can use this on the outside. It's very photo stable. Um, it has proven attractancy for up to 30 days. It kills flies um, for those 30 days on non-porous surfaces. And it can also be used in conjunction with your fly light program, right? So if you're using fly lights in a commercial property and you want to, you know, a lot of times the flies will land on the outside of the light. They don't quite go all the way in and get stuck on the glue board. You can treat the fly light or even just the inside of the, of the cover um, with the PT Alpine pressurized fly bait as well, just to get those stragglers. But also it's got, it gives a little bit of an attractant to your, um, to your fly light, right? So it pulls them in just a little bit, not from long distances. This is not a product that pulls uh, flies in from the fields across the street. It's just right within a couple feet of that, of that um, application. There is a little bit of a label um, instruction part for food handling areas with Alpine pressurized fly bait. So I did wanna make sure that I emphasize that and make sure that you read your labels closely, which I know you all do, right? You all read your labels before you apply in any situation. But the Alpine pressurized fly bait, um, if you're using it in food handling areas, it does have to be on a removable bait placement. Um, so this can be a small object. Um, it's no more than 24 square inches and no smaller than six inches square. That's just so we know that you get a lot of, you know, enough product on it. Um, it could be on rope or twine. It could be on a, an object that's made of wood or plastic, cardboard, even index cards, things like that, right? So you can do all of that and then it should have a label on it. You see in that picture, all of those have little labels on them and they say fly bait, do not touch. That's really the, all you need for the food handling area. 
it talks about all of that on the label exactly what is needed and what the requirement is um, and then you know it should be treated outside of that food handling area right so you would re retreat it um, also if you use something that is wipeable right you can clean that off um, the alpine pressurized 5 8 it's sticky it stays sticky and active that's how it holds that activity for 30 days so um, you, know, you can wipe it off so it's not attracting dirt or dirt buildup. So you can then place these cards in areas of fly activity, right? So whether it's a, underneath a bar or um, you just don't want to hang it above places that are food contact surfaces like prep tables and stuff, but anything other than that. All right, so that was a lot of information and a lot of product information about our Alpine suite. So now we're going to take it, we're going to put it all together. So we talk a lot about rings of protection. I know in my ant presentation, I really talk about those rings of protection, but there's three rings of protection when we're talking about this, right? So the ring one is your far, far exterior, um, the perimeter of a property. There happens to be a house in the picture, but this could be a commercial property as well, right? Whether it's a warehouse or a food processing plant or even a restaurant, right? But the, that, that perimeter of the, the outside perimeter of the property, right? Property line is what you're talking about with ring one. Ring two, you're talking about the actual perimeter of the structure, right? So that structure perimeter. And then ring three is the interior. So we'll kind of talk about this, right? So ring one, way outside the, you know, on the, the property line or you know, outside of that actual perimeter of the of the property. Um, so away from the structure, right? So it's these areas that are kind of highlighted in blue, would be in this picture pest susceptible areas, right? Every property is gonna be a little bit different. Um, but in this kind of a situation, you're really focusing on ants and occasional invaders, maybe some overwintering insects where they're harboring. Um, yellow jackets could be in this um, category, maybe large cockroaches, flies, fleas. You know, if you've got some wooded areas or they're shaded, you may have some fleas that are there or ticks, right? So in this ring one, I would really kind of look at, you're looking at like an Alpine WSG and you know possibly Alpine pressurized fly bait, depending on what your concern is and what insect you're dealing with, right? And then insect baits, right? Which we didn't cover any granular baits in this presentation, but this is where you'd be using those as well, right? If you're dealing with ants or cockroaches or or something, you know, that, that allows you, with using that WSG, it allows you to use those baits in the same place, right? Because it's not repellent. So moving on to ring two, so that exterior perimeter right adjacent to the structure. Um, so, you know, in this picture, it happens to be like a flower bed, a patio, um, sidewalks, things like that. So in this area, I really think you're probably focusing most on ants, um, occasional invaders and overwintering insects, maybe some large cockroaches, uh, flies, again, could be a problem in this area, and then entry points, right? So this is your actual structure. So you've got entry points, places that insects can get in, right? We don't want that. So again, you can use your Alpine WSG or Termidor um, for a perimeter product, right? And just watch your limitations on frequency of use and locations of use for Termidor, but you can fill it in with Alpine WSG, whether it's in the months that aren't Termidor months um, for you to treat or in, in coexistence with Termidor, right? So if you've got an area you need to treat that's not an area where you can treat with Termidor, then Alpine WSG would be a great alternative. Um, also, we talked about the fly pressurized fly bait. So maybe you're treating, um, you know, some uh, rungs on the railing for fly bait on that back patio, you know, to kind of keep the flies away um, when people are grilling out or something like that. So you might be treating there. You might be, um, you know, treating around entry points and stuff a little bit with that. Um, you also um, could be using the alpine dust. So in those entry point areas, it's a great place to put dust, right? So maybe it's under thresholds um, or the door sills, window sills, right? There's all different little entry points, anywhere where plumbing penetration goes into the home, um, any kind of gaps and cracks, um, foundation cracks, things would be great for the alpine dust. Um, if you do need an insecticide, you could use the alpine pressurized insecticide, right? Maybe it's a fine application, you just can't quite get in there with the WSG, then your alternative would be um, the Alpine pressurized insecticide, which would be great. So great, great alternative for that WSG in places you can't quite get it, or you need that really precise application. And then our last ring of protection here is going to be the interior of the home. 
And you'll see every ring we kind of, as we get closer to this interior, the number of products in this Alpine suite builds, right? So you can use more and more, and there's more products that I would recommend, right? So on the interior, you might be focusing on insects like ants, um, occasional invaders and overwintering insects again, uh, maybe German cockroaches, right? Or large cockroaches like Americans, um, depending on the situation. Uh, stored product pass, fleas, bed bugs, and then also again, entry points, right? So you kind of build on that. So WSG will give you a great liquid residual um, for all of those areas that you might need it. Um, but then also you could use that Alpine pressurized insecticide again, if you need something that's a precise application, um, maybe an aerosol would be better, you know, depending on where it is. Um, and you wanna leave a residual, but you don't want a lot of liquid. Um, so Alpine cockroach gel bait, whether it's rotation one, rotation two, you know, whichever one you're using for the six months that you're in. Um, this, you know, if you've got German cockroaches, that would be great um, for here. Um, and also American cockroaches as well. So Alpine uh, cockroach gel bait has, has co different cockroaches on the label and we have data um, supporting uh, high acceptance and, and mortality with all of those. So uh, Alpine foam would be a great application, right? For interior application and also the flea and bed bug um, spray. So if you've got fleas or ticks or bed bugs in the property that you're treating, you've got a great product for that. Um, and then if you're dealing with a commercial account and you're working with um, something that is within that special handling of pressurized fly bait, you might be using Alpine pressurized fly bait on the interior as well. So it's gonna kind of wrap up what I have for you today, but we do finish all of our presentations with a stewardship message. Um, really is product stewardship is everyone's responsibility, no matter what products you're using. But you do wanna make sure you're always reading and following label directions and referring to the label for the registered uses of those products. Um, uses that are not included in the label haven't been evaluated for human environmental safety. So if it's not on the label, don't do it, right? And then um, the use of products for non-labeled versions, violation of federal law, and can, be, can result in human and environmental hazard. So Chris, that's what I've got. I don't know if you wanna check the questions. Sure. Sure, thank you for this informative presentation, Desiree. That was great information. Um, so we're now gonna pivot over to answer some of the questions that came through. Um, and so, and as a reminder, you can still submit your questions through the questions pane of the control panel. So um, the first question's asking, um, this has to do with PT Alpine foam, and they were wondering, can it be applied in tree cavities? I believe so. <laughs> I never will, um, yeah, so Alpine foam, it's a great alternative actually for, um, if you have those higher, like it depends on the, probably the pest too that we're talking about, but for we'll, we'll say it's termites that you're talking about. Um, so if you have aerial colonies of termites, the Alpine foam is a great alternative um, for aerial baiting. If you don't have an opportunity for aerial baiting, um, it gets that active ingredient into those tree holes um probably need a little bit more information on the pest but um hopefully okay answer the question yep yep all right so um the next question is asking how do the ma bait matrices for the german cockroach baits differ uh rotation one and two <laughs> so the difference between those bait matrix matrices is really uh one will treat for those glucose averse, right? So bait adverse um, or gel bait adverse cockroaches, right? And the other one focuses on non-glucose averse. So if you have those uh, cockroaches that just won't feed on a glucose-based gel bait, then the other one is the one for you. And I always get them confused between the two, but <laughs> but we can definitely get you the information on which one which one you need. Okay, great. The next question's asking, where can we find Alpine WSG report on how good the residual is? If you uh, reach out to anyone on our sales team, depending on what part you are, or reach out to me uh, with the contact information, it's either on the screen or Chris is gonna send out, you'll get a, a uh, 
email with my information as well after the presentation, uh, we can get you the residual information. Perfect. Um, this question's asking for cockroaches, can Alpine WSG be applied over the same cracks and crevices already treated with gel bait? It can. That's a great question. Um, yes. So Alpine WSG and cockroach gel bait, uh, we'll go Alpine cockroach gel bait with this, for this question, uh, can be used in sync with each other. You can treat right over where you bait. Um, if you're using a product like a vert dry flowable, uh, you don't want to really get that product wet. So just keep that in mind as well. But you know, if you're using a vert dry flowable inside a void and then you're misting over, you know, kind of that wall where that void, you know, the, where the cockroaches are back in the wall, then you could use those two together as well. Um, but all of those products work really well together. And um, we have data, I think I mentioned, we have data um, that Alpine WSG combined with the Alpine cockroach gel bait actually works better. They work better together. Um, so you can treat them with them together and get rid of even more cockroaches, right? You can do a lot more elimination that way. Very good. Um, so the next question is asking, what product would be best suited for carpenter ants in a tree cavity? <laughs> <laughs> Back to the tree cavity. So now I feel like this is the this is the alpine foam question. Um, so inside a tree cavity, I would really have to look at labels um, for that. Alpine WSG, you could treat inside a tree hole with that. Like there's not restrictions on that. Um, and carpenter ants and alpine WSG go hand in hand. It's a great product for them. Um, I would have to look at the application for alpine foam. I feel like that's probably okay, but I would have to check at the, the label. Um, for sure, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be on the label, if that makes sense. All right. Um, this question is asking, is Alpine WSG or PT Alpine resistant to outside weather when used on exterior treatments? Uh, WSG or what was it, that pressurized Alpine? Uh, PT Alpine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So the pressurized product. Um, mm -hmm. Both of them have residual and they are great products for outdoors. Um, I can tell you for WSG, I have used WSG in my career for a very long time um, prior to BASF. So I've used it for flies and ants, um, large cockroaches, but all exterior work on those things. And it holds up. It has a great residual for that. Um, so I mean, I live in Orlando, so lots of rain and high UV, right? So it's a pretty brutal environment <laughs> in the exterior of these buildings here. Um, I also come from a lot of commercial uh, pest control applications, right? So it's a, it's a lot of exterior work where you just don't wanna do a lot of stuff inside. You wanna try to kill everything on the outside, right? So lots of WSG in those and haven't had an issue um, with it breaking down too quickly, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, so. I think that that answers the question. Yep. Thanks, Desiree. The next one is asking, can you talk about the different rates for Alpine WSG and how they affect ant control? Sure. Um, I should have put my rate my rate chart in there. I took that out. So the uh, rate chart, it really depends. Um, I think ants without having it in front of me. So I'm gonna apologize for that in advance, but um, ants have a label rate, just ants in general, right? So um, carpenter ants may be a little bit different, but uh, typically label rates are either longevity is what changes that label rate or size of insect or how tough it is to kill. So like when you get into things like scorpions and spiders sometimes are a little bit harder to kill, um, so they'll have a higher label rate versus uh, for ants, it's gonna be lower. And part of that also for ants is that if you're treating ants, right, you first of all, you don't wanna be repellent with them. So you don't wanna over treat, right? So any product can be repellent if you over, if you over apply, right? So don't over apply, that's the label for one, right? So legally you don't wanna over apply, but you don't want to kill off those ants before they get to the, the back to the colony, right? So a lot of products, even ant baits that are out there on the market, 
the active ingredient percentage is too high, right? So you'll end up, you'll, sure, you will see a reduction of ants, but you won't actually eliminate the colony. So they come back, right? So if you have ant issues that just keep coming back, it could be that you're just killing off the workers, right? The foragers that are out there um, and they're just never making it back to the colony, whether it's with a gel bait or WSG or advanced 375A, right? Whatever it is, um, right? So you don't wanna kill those workers off before they get back to the colony. It's the whole goal of using non-repellents and baits um, for insects like ants. Um, so they get back to the colony, they transfer that insecticide around, right? If it's a bait, they feed the bait to um, the larva. And, you know, there's a lot of biology involved in all of that, but they transfer that insecticide throughout the colony, right? Which is the goal is to eliminate the whole colony, not just those foragers. So. Very good. Thanks, Desiree. Um, another question is asking, um, if we're using alpine WSG alongside alpine cockroach gel bait, will it kill more cockroaches? It does. Yeah, and I think we kind of covered that in the, the other question about using them together. But we do, we have data. We did the um, data of using combos of different products with the, the gel bait by itself and then combo with WSG. And it, the effectiveness of that combo was higher. Uh, Alpine cockroach gel bait will kill 100% of the cockroaches anyway, you know, eventually, right? But it's faster and you get more, you can eliminate more cockroaches with using it combined. Um, you may also get some cockroaches with a liquid that you didn't know were there. Um, you know, so it's kind of the same premise I talked about treating dumpsters and garbage cans with Alpine WSG to turn them into, into bait stations. It's the same kind of thing. So if you're getting a liquid residual into that, those cracks and crevices and then the kind of without a scientific term, the gooky areas, right? The areas with lots of organic matter and stuff underneath um, in, in a commercial kitchen, especially like underneath the cook line and stuff like that, that all becomes bait then, right? Because they're gonna come back to those areas anyway, or they're already in those areas, maybe you just can't see them. Um, so you're treating, you're, you're, double, you're double dipping on that. So it helps you get, get rid of more. Okay, um, here's uh, another question asking, um, when would you use alpine pressurized fly bait instead of alpine WSG for fly control? That is a great question. So alpine WSG has no limitations, right? You can treat, you can turn those dumpsters into, into bait stations, perfect for flies. Uh, alpine pressurized is, great for you know an application uh, especially in commercial kitchens you know you can put it on one of those little the cards that says fly bait do not touch it attracts flies um to it which is good especially for like entries entry areas and things like that it's gonna you know kind of draw those flies away from that door don't put it too far away because i said it's only a couple couple feet right of attractiveness um but it's gonna kill them and it's gonna kill them fast um however I mentioned that the alpine pressurized fly bait is just a little bit sticky, right? So if it's an area that, like, let's say you're treating around a door frame and it's an area where you don't want to see any kind of residue or you don't want any kind of dust to settle there, I would highly recommend WSG in that case um, because around a door threshold is a perfect place for it for either one of them, right? But if it's a place that you don't want it to get sticky or look, you know, dusty or dirty then uh, i would hesitate away from the pressurized fly bait on that um, but e other than that really both of them are great products for any of the uses that are on the label perfect i don't see any other questions that have come through so with that i just want to let folks know thank you for your time today uh, we will be sending a follow-up email that contains a link to the recording. So if you want to rewatch it or share it with some colleagues, um, and in addition, the email will also contain um, Desiree's contact information. So if you want to reach out to her directly, that will also be provided. So on behalf of Desiree, Jeff, and myself, thank you for joining us today. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone.